Salt structures are common throughout the southern part of the North Sea Basin. So in this presentation we can look at how we can build an interpretation of one such structure. The image comes from the Virtual Seismic Atlas. Well let's pick the salt and the upper margin of the salt is fairly clear but where it goes to the flanks of this salt dome it's pretty obscure because the imaging is not brilliant. So we'll just pick an interpretation showing the salt distribution with the top boundary shown uh, with a solid line where we're pretty secure about it and the flanks where we're far less secure shown by the dashed line. So the side walls are very indistinct. Okay so let's build up an interpretation. I like starting in the shallow and working deeper so that we can build up our interpretation starting with the simple geometries and working to increasing complexity. So let's look at the surface. Here we go. Here's the upper part of the strata in here and we can see that the internal reflections within this beige unit simply lap across everything. Although they are stratal terminations they appear to be at a wavelength such as we can tell here longer than the salt body, so presumably this is a post-kinematic succession. So we've got regional onlap, and the strata themselves seal the salt system in a post-kinematic. And they lie on unconformity against underlying strata. And I've picked the unconformity out with the purple smudges on here, where we've got truncation of the underlying reflectors, as we can see here. So the yellow package, and indeed the top of the salt dome, has been planed off by the erosion associated with that unconformity. But if you look at the internal architecture of the reflections within the yellow package, there are local onlaps and so forth in there, suggesting that it is synkinematic with respect to the salt movement. So these are complicated lap relationships that imply the presence of halokinetic sequences, and there's onlap onto the salt and tilting of the salt on that right-hand side. These relationships, together with the erosion across the top of the package, explain the thickness variations in the yellow unit. Let's move deeper. And here's a unit I've picked out in green, which also terminates against the salt body, which we're interpreting as onlap. And there's a local uh, lap relationship on that right-hand panel onto underlying units as well. So we can just summarise that like this. Now if you look at the base of this green unit in here, you can see that it is discordant with respect to the underlying reflectors. So there's another unconformity in there, picked out by that slightly vague purple line, and the mauve unit underneath, the top of which abuts up onto that unconformity surface, so that looks like it's an erosional surface. Further down, the internal reflectors of the mauve unit onlap the margins of the salt, Admittedly, it's indistinct, but they must pinch out against a salt body regardless of wherever we put the boundary of the salt. And there's also, on the right-hand side, looks like there's lapping onto the base of the mauve unit against the salt, where it remains more or less horizontal. So, erosional truncation on the top of the mauve unit by an unconformity, lateral termination on lap onto the sidewalls of the salt, and apparent downlap, maybe tilted on lap, but it's indistinct, against the lower part of the salt layer. So we can summarise our stratal relationships across the area like this. Now let's build up understanding, use a chronostratigraphic chart. So we'll plot the salt at the bottom, it's the oldest strata, and we'll build this up progressively to younger units as we move up the screen. Looking at this image again, we're going to start with the purple then and show its various lap relationships down onto the salt and against the salt and upwards and terminating against the erosional unconformity. So it plots like this, non-deposition where the purple units lap against the salt bodies and erosion represented by the erosional unconformity. OK, return to the seismic and our interpretation. Now we'll put on the green unit which laps against the salt and actually onlaps the unconformity on the right hand side which is what we're showing here. And those onlaps represent non-deposition against the salt body. It looks like it's a synkinematic succession. Let's continue. Moving up now to the yellow units, these two show relationships of onlapping the salt, but also internal onlaps, like this. 
So quite complicated relationships of non-deposition against the salt and against the lower units and erosion at the top of the yellow. And there's the unconformity. Coming back to the section in here, so we've just plotted the purple unconformity through there and now we'll have the beige units put across the top there. A regional onlapping package with more sedimentation on the left and on the right. So a period of non-deposition towards the right hand side of our seismic image. So you can see quite a complicated history here of salt mobility and rotation and erosion of the strata and then renewed deposition on top. Let's consider the lower part of the section in here where we have erosion of some of these mauve units implying bulging and uplift of the salt creating a high that can get planed off. So let's think about how this works. To start with to get that erosion we have a broad dome at least as extensive as the distance across which the strata have been eroded, as seen on the chronostratigraphic chart. So the salt starts off as a broad dome or pillow. Let's move up. So this broad pillow structure then evolves. Let's look at the chronostrat chart and you can see the area of erosion in those purple units is then overlain by increased sedimentation in the green and particularly the yellow units. Just highlight those here. So renewed sedimentation above the eroded section, implying that our broad pillow section subsides in the flanks of it, like this. So we have a narrow dome out of the broad pillow, and some of the dome flanks have subsided to create rim synclines. And this history of salt dome evolution is brought out nicely by the chronostratigraphic chart. The doming salt has changed its lateral extent through time. It's quite a common feature of salt mobility. So an example there of taking apart a seismic section, building chronostratigraphic understanding and using this to deduce the evolution of a mobile salt body.